بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Alhamdulillah, we have to fear to continue uh, our study of Hikmatul Ishraq and inshallah today after our introductory discussions we will go more towards the content of the book. In introduction to Hikmatul Ishraq which is the main work of Sheikh Ishraq. As we said, he had some other books like Al-Mutarahat, like Talwihat, which was mainly explaining the ideas of Aristotle and Masha'in. But this is the book Hikmatul Ishraq, the one that is based on his own system of philosophy. So in introduction to Hikmatul Ishraq, he says that um, my brothers you asked me several times what is Hikmatul Ishraq and therefore I had to write something but had it not been that Allah has made a covenant with the people who have knowledge not to hide their knowledge and had he not you know, asked them to share what they know I would never be happy to share this with anyone he says because there are difficulties in this and he says that you know I predict or foresee that if I start talking about this there will be problems actually we know that he was finally killed so he says you always wanted me to write something about my findings about what I have reached through Zawq, through you know, my mystical you know, f experiences when I am alone and put them in a book. And he says we should know that knowledge was not exclusive to the previous generations. It's not that the gates of Marifa are closed or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who grants knowledge is na'udhubillah miserly these days and he is not gracious anymore. He has given everything to the previous generations and then closed the gate. So you should expect that always new inspirations may come something that previous people may not have said you shouldn't be you know surprised of course i say in barakats that certainly this is true the gates of inspirations and communications from allah are open even with respect to the quran we had this discussion that in the series on knowing the quran and the book lessons on knowing the quran that Allah keeps sending new guidance through the Qur'an's new light, Shafa, Rahmah, through the Qur'an. Qur'an is not a book which was sent 14 centuries ago and then lost connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a living book. We talked about this. We know about Holy Spirit and inspirations. We had, alhamdulillah, some talks about Holy Spirit. 
but the thing is that there must be harmony so any new inspiration if it is from God should be somehow in harmony with previous impressions if they were from God we cannot have totally different uh, you know directions we can have new things we have can have things that may look to some people they are uh, coming for the first time but the roots must be there so it's always an offshoot of the same tree of Hekmah uh, so this is something very important therefore anyone who is really inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must be full of appreciation of the previous inspirations by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be very respectful to the people who received them this is in barakats what I wanted to say so he says although before this book I have compiled some books about Aristotle's philosophy but this is different from them and has a special method he says I have not unlike previous books I have not obtained all the things which are here through reasoning through thinking Here, Zouq and Riyaz, a spiritual struggle and exercises and mystical findings have been more important, have played greater role. And he says, because all our um, ideas are not through Burhan and argument, therefore, if someone questions our arguments it doesn't matter I said this before also for you so it's not that we have only one way for reaching these points which is based on reasoning and arguing and if someone questions them or prove them to be wrong and inadequate we will start doubting he says no these are seen these are observed these are witnessed and with people who doubt it's not going to be damaged and he says whoever is traveling who's wayfaring on the path of truth would be with me would be helping me would be traveling with me and he says Ustadul falsafa wa imamul hikma Aflatun Plato. He calls Plato the teacher of philosophy and imam of hikma. He says his zok was like this. Zok, as we have used many times, zok literally means taste, but this is not taste of with the tongue. It means a spiritual you know experiences of the soul and he says but Plato was not the first one Hermes that we will talk about him later more that he says Validul Hokama he was the like parents for Hokama he had similar ideas before Plato inshallah we will talk about Hermes Hermes was a great philosopher and some people say they were so much impressed by him then they considered him to be a god you know in Greece they had you know many gods or goddesses male and female for different things and one responsible for Hekma is Hermes but Hermes was the name of a philosopher that was a great person inshallah we'll talk about him 
And some people say Hormuz in Farsi also comes from the same uh, root as Hermes. We have Hormuz, a name in Farsi. So, he wants to say, I am not the first person. Plato had this idea. Before Plato, Hermes had this idea. These early philosophers and Hokama, because they were worried about the masses, the lay people who were, are not educated and may misunderstand, they said things with language of symbols in a symbolic, in a secretive language. And he says some of the rejections that are made against them, it's because they took the surface. They didn't understand that these are symbols. They convey another meaning. They took them literally and attacked them. Mir Fendreski has a good uh, couplet. He says, In Sukhan Dar Rams, Danayan Pishin Gufta Ant. In Sukhan Dar Rams, Danayan Pishin Gufta Ant. Means that the scholars, the learned people who were in the past, they have said this, but using the language of symbols. Peybarad bar rams ha har kas ke u danasti. Peybarad bar rams ha har kas ke u danasti. So danayan, the people who had knowledge, said this in symbolic language. Those who are dana, those who are learned, they are able to decode. They are able to understand those secrets. They are not meant for other people. A message from Danayan for Danayan. Dana means those who have danished in a knowledge. So, the rejections, the refutations are for the literal aspect, superficial aspect of what they said. Earlier, Hokama, so he says, they have made their philosophy based on Nur and Zulma, light and darkness. And you know that in Bedaya also we mentioned this, you know. Sheikh Ishraq was very familiar also with Persian philosophers, ancient Persian philosophers. Unfortunately, many books on history of philosophy, they just start from Greek philosophers. They don't talk about Asian philosophers in Iran, in India, other places that much. Some maybe, but many of them, just they start with, you know, uh, Greek philosophers. Sheikh Ishra was very familiar with Persian, ancient, you know, philosophers, what sometimes it's called Hokama ul Force. So people like Jamasp, Buzar Jumeir, they had also similar ideas about a philosophical system based on light and darkness. So, if they speak with the language of light and darkness, you should not think it is physical darkness or light. You should not think it's like the idea of uh, the Zoroastrians or people who have Mani religion. One of the ancient religions in Iran was Manaviyat. So he says, no, uh, we don't want to believe in 
two principles. This is not dualism. Sanawiyat. Of course, uh, nowadays even Zoroastrians don't, you know, s accept that they are polytheistic. They say, you know, we are monotheistic uh, faith and uh, we believe in one source. But there was a reading of Zoroastrianism which was suggesting that they believe in God of goodness and badness, you know, Ahura Mazda in contrast to Ahriman. Uh, we discussed this in also Divine Justice by Ayatollah Mutahari. But now they themselves don't accept this. And anyway, inshallah, they always believe the same way that there is only one God. But there is such a reading, some people at least have this understanding or may think that this is the same. We have uh, a principle of light, a principle of darkness in parallel, independent from each other, like two rivers going from beginning to, of the history to the end. No, there is no such a thing as two. And then he says, earlier, Hokama and those who came later, only they used different terms, they spoke different languages, but there was no fundamental difference between them. Of course, he, don't ref he doesn't refer to um, materialistic or, I don't know, experimentalist uh, and empirist philosophers and positive philosophers, etc. Uh, he talks about Hokama. He says they always believed in three realms Aql, Nafs, Tabiat. Intellect, the realm of intellects, the realm of the souls, and physical world. So he says. They never had this agreement about Tawheed and other principles. And he says, when it comes to Aristotle, although he was very high, very respected, but we should not exaggerate to the extent that we underestimate then his teachers, Plato and then teacher of teacher Socrates. So Socrates is somehow teacher for Aristotle because of teacher of teacher. And then he says, some of the teachers of Aristotle were prophets, like Hermes and we should not underestimate them. Then he says, in Hekmatul Ishraq, we are not that much uh, engage with those philosophers who are just think, doing thinking and reasoning and bath. Remember, we talked about hikmat bahthi, hikmat zawqi. We want someone who does hikmat bahthi, no problem, that is needed, but also hikmat zawqi, someone who has both aspects. And he says, any person who wants to study this book, the least condition that they must, you know, fulfill is that at least there must be divine attraction, a flash of light illuminating their soul. You remember when we studied, some of you were there in uh, the ninth section of Esharat, how Jazabat starts, flashes of light. So he says you must have some mystical experience, at least some attractions of love from Allah, some flash of light must be there so that you can start reading this book. I hope, inshallah. Allah helps us to be qualified for this. The book that I am using now, inshallah, I will introduce uh, later, has a very good also uh, footnote here about 
uh, Hermes. He says some people have said Hermes is the same as Prophet Idris. And they say he was from Egypt and somehow founder of philosophy. Egyptians had great respect for him and they say he was lawmaker, he was a king and also he had some essays on hidden sciences or you know strange sciences like alchemy. Afzaluddin Kashani has translated one of his essays and there are also some stories about him. Uh, they say that one of the students of Hermes was a person that himself became a king. Four of the students of Hermes became kings and anyway the a student of the Hermes who was a king Oscolibus or Oscolibus they say that people so much loved him that then when he died they even made a statue of him and started worshiping him so there was an element of revelation according to uh, to Sheikh Ashraq available in some of these early philosophers who were teachers of someone like Aristotle Aristotle didn't start from scratch he had great teachers and some of them were prophets. Okay, after this introduction, Sheikh Ishraq starts talking about logic, mantiq, and his discussion about mantiq maybe is not necessary for us, maybe there is not that much um, new that would affect uh, you know our understanding of Hikmatul Ishraq and then he has some muhakamat some kind of arbitration some kind of uh, listening to both sides and making a kind of settlement between Ishraqis and Peripatetics, followers of Aristotle. For example, about Asalatul Wujud wa Asalatul Mahiyya. So, if you remember, we said that according to Masha'in, uh, Wujud is Asil, although because this discussion was not independently discussed, sometimes in their text they incline towards Asalatul Mahiyya, but generally speaking, they were Asalatul Wujudi and Sheikh Ishraq is Asalatul Mahubi. And Mullah Sadra, of course, is Asalatul Wujudi and he argues for that. So Sheikh Ishraq has a discussion here about Asalatul Mahiyya. Also, he has a discussion, for example, about Ibsar. If you remember when we studied Bidayatul Hikmah or in Sharh al Manzumah or other books, but uh, so far we have studied this in English, we had a discussion about what is the reality of our knowledge about things outside, and in particular, sight, vision. Sheikh Ishraq has a unique idea that maybe before him no one has said. He says, what 
other people believed and then he says his own idea he says aristotle had the idea that images of things which are outside would be imprinted in our eye and then from our eyes it goes to the brain and then they will be processed in our soul and we will have the vision so what is important to start the process is that something happens in the eyes the images are formed in the eyes but Sheikh Ishraq says this is not right he says when we see something great like mountains or you know rivers or sky how can they be taking form or be imprinted in our small little eyes Masha on of course say that it is by calculation and comparison like scales you know sometimes you have maps it says that every cent centimeter in this map maybe is one kilometer yeah so by comparison you can understand you, you have a small map but you can understand the sizes of the countries so they say by comparison we can understand that for example we see a, a for example tree next to that tree there's a person standing you know the size of a human being then you can understand the greatness of the tree for example etc uh, but Sheikh Ishaq says this means then we have to always do calculation and reasoning but when we look at something we don't do these things we have direct vision some others had the idea that when you see something light goes from your eyes outside like a pyramid peak of the pyramid is in the eyes but little by little it becomes bigger and bigger like this and then it can uh, reach things which are very large but if they are in distance but Sheikh Ishraq says this is also wrong light doesn't go out of our eyes and he says for example is this light you know Johar is Aras and you know is it going with our choice or without our choice so he doesn't accept this one then he has his own idea and he says or seeing or sighting is that when you are faced with something in front of you which has light which is bright then your soul will embrace that a heart this embracing is roya so roya is for the soul is a shrag nafs so nafs is developing a kind of understanding which needed something to be in front to ignite it but it's the work of nafs not eyes so he has this new idea in any case these these are some of the mohakemat that he has and then he starts with his main discussion about Hikmatul Ishraq so what he says about Hikmatul Ishraq as you know is very much based on the concept of light Noor in philosophy of Aristotle you know that we say when we compare anything with existence 
it is either wajib al wujud or mumtana'ul wujud or mumkin al wujud yeah if it is wajib al wujud it is necessary if it is mumkin al wujud means it can exist it can not exist it is mumtana'ul wujud means impossible to exist of course wujub imkan imtina can be used f between other concepts for example, Zaydun Katabun is Kitaba Wajib or Munkin or Mumtana, you can ask. But in philosophy, because we are concerned more about Wujud and we discuss Ahwala Ammi of Wujud, general properties of Wujud, therefore we talk about Wajib al Wujud, Mumtana al Wujud, Munkin al Wujud. Okay? But Shaykh Ishraq starts differently. He says, everything is either nur or zulm. Instead of saying everything is either wajib or mumkin or mumtana, he says everything is either nur or zulm, light or darkness. Light is divided into two types. Light, which is qa'imun bizate, is self-sufficient, self-subsistent, dependent on itself, or qa'im bil ghayr, depends on something else. Darkness or zulma is also two types. Darkness, which is based on itself, dependent on itself, or dependent on غير, on something else. So, all together, then we have two in two, four types of things. Okay? Things which are light and self-subsistent, light and dependent, dark and self-subsistent, dark and dependent. If it is light and self-subsistent, this is nur johari This is substantial light. This is mujarrad. This is immaterial. This includes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This also is about intellects. Although they are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but their essence is light. And also nufus, the souls. Light which is dependent is not johari, is not substantial, it's accidental. For example, you see in fire there is light, or in the sun there is light. Light of the sun, light of the fire is different from light of soul, or light of intellects, or light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to darkness, darkness which is self-subsistent is Jawhari again. But this is quite opposite, you know, because this is then very dark. He calls it Ghasaq. Ghasaq al-Layl. Ghasaq, Ghasaq al-Layl, you know, we use. Ghasaq means darkness, very dark. This is ajsam, physical objects. Darkness, which is dependent, is accidental. So instead of ajsam, which are johari, you talk about a'raz, the nine accidental categories, maghulat tes'i araziyya, maghulat tes'i araziyya, kam, kayf, mata, ayn, vaz, jeda, and yaf'al, and yanfa'il, these are dependent on Johar, 
Johar is dark, they are also dark, but they are dependent. Then he has some names for this. So if light is Qa'ime Bezat or Johari, he calls it Mujarrad Tam. Noor, Mujarrad Tam. If it is Qa'ime Belghir, dependent on others, he calls Noor Arazi, or accidental. The same, Zulmat Qa'im Bizzat is Ghasak and of course there are many so the plural is Qawasak Zulmat Pai Band Beghir or Qa'im Belghir or dependent on other things is Hay'a, is Aras Hay'a is, means the cast, the form Then he argues in this way he says, every shay, everything, is either understanding itself, its own essence and substance, or is heedless about itself. If understands itself, is self-conscious, then he calls Noor Mujarrat that has understanding of itself which includes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you remember according to Masha'in there are 10 intellects Aql Awal up to Aql Fa'al which is the 10th one they all have understanding of themselves they are also Noor Mujarrat they are makhluq, but they are nur mujarrat because they have understanding of themselves. Also, ughule arziye aflatun, the plateaus, horizontal ughul. Those ten of masha'in are hierarchical. The first is the closest to Allah, then comes down. The lowest is Aql Fa'al, which is running and managing physical world, material world. But then we have Oqul Arziye, which are said by Plato, which are the ideas or Musul from Idos. So they have understanding. And then he says, if something is aware of itself but is dependent like the light in the stars or a fire etc this is arazi nure arazi so we have Noor Mujarrad and Noor Arazi. Sorry, I have to connect my laptop. Going to the basics of system of Hikmatul Ishraq. So he says, if this light is dependent, we call it Noor Arazi is not Johari, it's not like Nur Mujarrat. And if it's not aware of its essence, but it is dependent on itself, self subsistent, he calls it Ghasak, like all the Ajsam, all the physical objects, whether it is like, uh, for example, stone, wood, or, you know, 
uh, a triangle, a square, etc. And if this thing, which is not aware of itself, it is dependent on something else, like colors, like smells, like taste, then it would be heya. Heya means the cast, the kind of like shape or aras accident. And up to the end of the book, he has these four. You have to be careful not to uh, get confused when we say dependent on itself. It doesn't mean wajibul wujud only. Dependent on itself mostly means johar. And johar also is not only a type of uh, mahiya. Because in normal philosophy that we did, uh, we don't say God is johar. We say mahiya, which is mumkin, is johar or aras. But sometimes johar is used in the sense of not being aras. And it can be used for mumkin al wujud, which is johar, or wajibul wujud, because wajibul wujud is not aras. So anything which doesn't depend on other things is johar, whether it's mumkin or what. So you have to be careful. When he says johar or he says qa'im bezant, it's not wajibul wujud necessarily. In nur can be wajibul wujud or uqul or souls. And even in darkness, we can have johar. Okay? Okay. I think we stop here and 